If you are anything like me, at some point in your life, you have wondered what the impact of a single nuke would be on the human population. Today, we're gonna take a look at what would happen in this hypothetical scenario, and as the video progresses, I assure you that this scenario looks much better from a hypothetical standpoint than in reality. The effects would be far beyond our understanding and would lead to a total humanitarian collapse bringing us back to the Stone Age. Today, we will see how the Tsar Bomba would look like in your city. This 50 megaton multi-stage nuke was the largest ever detonated by the Soviet Union in 1961. This would be impractical today, as this bomb weighed 27 tons and could only be dropped from an aircraft. Today, we possess ballistic nuclear weapons, which are self-propelled at several times the speed of sound, though they have less power than the nuke we will use as an example here. The detonation would occur once the nuke reaches approximately a thousand meters above the surface. Up until this point, the impact that this device is going to have is yet to be revealed. What we would see in the first second is a dominant light globe and not much else. A globe with a light so powerful that would instantly blind us. A few seconds later, this light traveling at 300,000 km per second would make the day extremely bright and create an extremely intense light, blinding us if we are within a radius of 100 km, then creating a fireball of 5 km. This fireball reaching millions of degrees Celsius at its center which would vaporize everything inside. Humans within this area would be turned into gas in nanoseconds. Next, we possess the heavy blast damage zone, which extends up to 10 kilometers and would devastate all buildings and humans in this area. If by the greatest luck someone survives in this zone, they collapse buildings, they're fired, or the heat from the main fireball would likely finish them off. At this point, the death toll would still be 100%. Then, we possess the moderate blast damage zone with about 5 psi. It would suffer the same effects as the previous area. Virtually everyone in this area would perish due to the same factors, but the intensity would be less than in the previous zone. After that, we have the last zone, called the Light Blast Damage Zone. While your chances of survival here are much higher, the chances of permanent or lifelong injury are nearly 100%. The debris from the buildings, the fire, 
the light from the explosion, the third degree burns and the radiation rain are the most dangerous enemies in this area. Virtually, if you are outside, everyone in this area would suffer third degree burns, which wouldn't cause pain as the skin's nerves would be destroyed. Some buildings with weaker architecture and infrastructure could easily collapse like this due to the shockwave within a 50 km radius. The debris being dragged at extremely high speeds could reach you and end your life. Or if you don't escape quickly enough, the radiation rain from the center would reach your area and kill you slowly leading you to your final days feeling like you are in hell, just as many radiation poisoning victims have experienced. After this, all the buildings, homes and human constructions within a radius of about 250 kilometers, depending on the topology of your city, would suffer severe damage from the shockwave of the explosion. If your city is in a hilly or mountain area, this radius would be smaller, but if your city is in a flatter area, this radius could be even larger. The damage would even reach neighboring countries, as happened with the Tsar Bomba in 1961, where seismic readings even reached neighboring countries, like Finland and Norway, over a thousand kilometers from ground zero, so we can get an idea of what this would cause in a more urbanized country. Years and years later, the city would not only resemble a zombie movie, but it would also be filled with radiation, similar to what we see today in Chernobyl with all life completely destroyed, all animals, plants, living beings, humans, buildings, and everything you could imagine virtually erased from reality. This would become a science fiction scenario turned into reality. Estimating the fatalities from a 50 megaton nuke is both difficult and easy at the same time, that is, probably 99% of the people in a large city would disappear. I'll leave you with this page that approximates the number of fatalities from every nuke ever made by humanity. You just need to plug in your city. In the darkest corners of theory, scientists once imagined weapons of 10, 100, even gigatons of power. Devices that would make the Tsar Bomba look like a firecracker. Ideas floated about bombs that could fracture countries or trigger extinction-level winters. Fortunately, the poor scalability of fusion makes this impractical and almost literally impossible. Nuclear energy and consequently nuclear weapons are two sides of the same coin, but with very different faces. One is creation and life. The other one is pure destruction. We can't forget that destruction can undo creation in just an instant. We have the power to destroy the world, but we also have the power to protect it. Let us never forget which side of the coin matters most.